Yeah, what everybody says. But but religion, there is a higher power. The devotion walked over to her. One put out a pistol and put it to her head. And the other Bolshevik say, why waste the bullets? Look at it. She'll be dead if I saw something. They never shot at you. Right after that, Bull Simons told us that uh, this was a volunteer operation. Anybody that wanted to back out at this time was should do it now. No one did. He told us we had a 50-50 chance of making it back. He made me cut my beard, <laughs> which it was under under duress. <laughs> also, uh, uh, broke my fingernail, so you can look at that. Kevlar on. See how things are properly done in the world, in true tactical situations, in true evolved training evolutions. This is how I prepare for a very important date. Nah, not that kind of date you're thinking. It's much, much more important than that. It's one that happens in 50 years. from Soldier Systems Daily. I'm here with Eric Warren's VSS. I'm so participating in the 50th anniversary of the Sante Raid. I love these. Sante Raid Sunday, 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 Sunday. November 21st, I had the fortunate opportunity to witness and be part of a historic event for the U.S. Army Special Forces, the 50th anniversary in commemoration of the Sante Raid. The Sante Raid is one of the most well-known, most well-executed rescue operations related to the Vietnam War. It was a tight collaboration among the Army, Navy, and Air Force. Also known as Operation Ivory Coast or Operation Kingpin, it aimed to rescue as many as 70 American prisoners of war from their Vietnamese captors near Hanoi, North Vietnam. I had a chance to talk to and listen to the many stories of the Raiders who back in 1970 were hand-picked and rigorously selected and trained soldiers from the U.S. Army Special Forces, also known as the Green Berets. Yeah, you guys know Terry was that guy. They come in and we better get up out of here. Wow. He wasn't even 21. And then, and then here's something else that I think has been declassified. I'm not certain. So, but I think it's open source now. So I'm gonna do all the good little words here. That's, uh, what they call that thing there, Ranger? Uh, non-attribution? Non yeah, non yeah, non-attribution. That's right. Yeah. I don't know where it came from. I don't know either. But Terry used to smell my letters. <laughs> he used to sniff them out, man. <laughs> That's why Carrie got on the mission. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you. 
Isn't that, isn't that cute? <laughs> One day at mail call, we're calling out all the names. Harry, you didn't get none. Johnson. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Okay, then we drop the hands. Right yeah, this tight. Oh, we drop the hands because we need the hands to be working with shells and stuff like that. We drop the hands, and that should be holding up right into your pocket. Okay? So anytime it was so tight, it was perfect. If we got distracted or something like that, perfect. Put all we had to do is pull it up. Any place we moved our head, this weapon was moved. Pull it up, just move it in. All you had to do was lock right in there. That's what Draw that damn 554 tight. Oh, hell, yeah. So, me still being down there. As a G Chief down there, I pass that along to the regiment. So, when you see those guys, uh, yeah, yeah. 554 is great one there. That's coming from Lake Hall. I'll show them some of the other fancy stuff. Go ahead and get that 550 core tightened up there and see how it goes. Ah, that's quarters. All right. Drop the hand, put it up, do that hand, that weapon, put it around, and automatically on top. The anniversary celebration included a reenactment of the raid with men clad in full regalia. Are they going to have a vehicle um, up front for, you know, we can carry the kit on down there and uh, help kit you up real quick so it won't take no time? Yeah. And, um, We're done in here. We'll bag the guns so we can drag, drag the guns down there without any attention and we'll take you guys the most direct way down where, you know, where they want to stage the van. Uh, I'll, I'll go, um, we'll do it up front. So it's going to be the shortest walk. Wait, is this the military yeah. shortest walk? Uh, or the real shortest this reenactment, which will be part of a documentary, captured the flow of events of the raid. Needless to say, every detail was thought out and executed to create an authentic feel of the raid, as actual raiders were there as technical advisors. Robbins was to the left of him, and then they took that guard tower under fire, full auto, the edge of this. And then Bob Jeffrey uh, ordered the field to come up in the Listen up. Ready? Action. The men participating in the documentary got to test the rifles on the rifle range and also got the detailed instructions on how the raid was planned and implemented. A highlight, I must say, was seeing surviving raiders also dressed in full regalia, sharing their stories from that day, memories of their heroism. I told, I had my whole A-team walk out on these briefings. But we just ate. The rangers were chasing us. 
and finally they they branded us as the ghost team. We have two females that we were that Pascal, our brigade, uh, our tank commander, assigned because he told us we were going in. He said there's one team that's going to have two females attached to it. Well, when we parachuted in at about two o'clock in the morning, that I seen a figure running around down there. By the time I got closer, I could tell by the hips she was wearing blue jeans. Hey, yes. 594 got the females. So we authenticated back and forth, rolled up the parachute. They had two females. One was a heavy a heavy equipment, equipment operator with the third, you know, back at Fort Stewart. And the other one was a, I think she was a weapons resource. Weapon supply type yeah. type of, and they were great. I'm serious. They were great. As a former Special Forces soldier, I am privileged to be part of this momentous event, and I am one of the countless Americans that celebrates its significant contributions. 44th Infantry Commander got involved. Do you mean these people? You're gonna tell me they're gonna blow my bridge <laughs> at 12 o'clock midnight? Gonna blah 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 bullshit. A staff sergeant who was a friend of mine on that, on that it, it special forces team, he said, "Sir, all due respect, they're gonna blow your bridge." <laughs> well, when the time came, the engineers—I don't know what they did, but evidently. The current was swift. It almost icicles in a damn river. But he he walked off an area and he threw a stick in there or something. And then he watched it and he timed it. And he, out of that he figured out if we entered the water at a certain time before midnight, we'd be under a bridge. You know, so four of us would, we had smoke, uh, we had one of those, uh, detonating, detonating, uh, grenades, practice, and we had, uh, a flashbang and whatever. So what we did, we got in the water, but we had to use a sling rope. The, the swift, it was a gun. But we we got it toward the, you know, the buttons of the bridge. And then we climbed up in there and we wired the whole, the whole damn bridge. So uh, when midnight came, uh, the gorillas opened up on a bridge. So we heard the 4th Infantry Division, the, the, the third, yo, here they come, A Company, B Company, blah, 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 you know, but then that's when we pulled all the things, the smoke, the flares, boom, boom, in four different places on the bridge. Then we jumped in the water and let the current take us out. But they were pretty smart. When they hit the bridge, first they were throwing, you know, uh, simulators or whatever over the bridge and it was it was just floating away but then they decided to throw it in the same direction we were going <laughs> and I tell you what one of them flies back land, rang my bell but we got out of there and the gorillas and the, the, the team leader they picked us up so next day it was over you know, the, the problem was over. But we got a critique from the Italian commander. And he's standing on a fucking, he's standing on a fucking stage with a cup of coffee, star critiques, and we're looking like we just came out of a fucking swamp. I got an option A, option B. Option A, yes sir, I'm guilty. I want blah, 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 do whatever you want, option A. But option B, no sir, 
I want a court martial. Well, I took option B. Shocking. So believe it or not, my team, we all got ready. We, I carried nine women, some, some carried sort of shotguns <laughs> and whatever, but we were swinging clothes and we had no officer on my team. So it was standing and listening there. To further commemorate the 50th anniversary of the bravery of the soldiers on the Sante Raid, an actual Sante Raider, Terry Buckler, released the book, Who Will Go Into the Sante POW Camp, a memoir of both text and pictures of the operation. So this morning with uh, Eric Lawrence VSS channel, we have one of the SF legends with me, a friend of mine, Terry Buckler, and uh, got his new book out, Who Will Go? Obviously, he was one of those. So we just spent the weekend working on a uh, 50th anniversary documentary and uh, it looks good even though he was in some of it. I made it look better with obviously he made me cut my beard which it was under under duress. <laughs> also uh, uh, broke my fingernail so you can look at that. But uh, Terry go ahead and you know give us a run through of what's going on here. Well uh... the book is a must read for special operations mission planners as well as enthusiasts in military history as it was told by brave men who actually lived it. In part two of this series, Terry gives us a detailed picture of the raid. Uh, right after that, Bull Simons told us that uh, this was a volunteer operation. Anybody that wanted to back out at this time was, should do it now. No one did. He told us we had a 50-50 chance of making it back. For more of Terry's account, from his being drafted to the planning, training, implementation of the heroic Sante Raid, watch out for our next episode. Due to the hurricane that was coming in, the winds were kind of blowing us a, a little bit, and it, it kind of felt like we were lead chopper was blown off. And there was a uh, school not too far from us, about 500 meters from Sante. And unfortunately, or fortunately, actually for us, Green or uh, Apple One landed at that compound, and Greenleaf guys got off just like we got off, shooting at anything that moved in front of you. Please subscribe to my full 30 and Patreon account for more videos on safety, military methods, security training and tactics, and weapons handling. Don't forget to subscribe to Eric Lawrence VSS and visit Eric Dash. Lawrence.com for more info. Also come visit shop.vig-sec.com for all the products that I carry.